perhaps I'm foolish in the sense that we're not, I shouldn't be worried about being arrested, I should be worried about being shot. Uh, if that's how they play the game, then I'm in big trouble because they'll just come and shoot me, and you too if you get into this. But if we actually have a legal system that works, then uh, this is called advocacy, and uh, it's not a crime. Uh, it's an exercise of the first, fourth, and, uh, I don't know, a couple of other amendments to the Constitution. Uh, Henry David Thoreau, you don't get more American than that, said that uh, if you are right, you are a majority of one. And we live by majority rule. My, I don't feel heroic. I mean, it's not false modesty or anything. I don't feel heroic doing this. This is really humdrum to me. I just could not behave any other way because of what I've seen. I mean, this transcends laws. All that is, is uh, it's seen as preposterous. I mean, there are, there are, I believe in universal laws. You shouldn't kill people. You shouldn't lie to people. Um, you shouldn't uh, inject yourself between lovers. Uh, most cultures, I think, recognize a set of universal laws. But thou shalt not smoke marijuana? Surely the god of Mount Sinai has better things to do than uh, worry about that sort of thing. We have to create a new option. All social progress is made by people taking chances. Uh, if I am an anomaly, some kind of dangerous sociopath, then my message will be swamped and lost in the noise of the tumult of the world because there are thousands of messages out there. If, on the other hand, this is a great and important domain of truth, then they are crazy to try and repress it because it cannot be repressed. They have tried to repress it. Oh, Why have they tried to repress it? If, if use of psychoactive drugs is so uh, you know, good for the psyche, why have they repressed it? Uh, they sought to repress it because um, there's something in the Western mind that is very nervous, that gets very nervous when you try to talk about... Um, the uh, bedrock of ontology. McLuhan talked about this. He, he met great resistance, and all he was saying was that print had created certain kinds of unconscious biases in society in favor of uniformity, linearity, and uh, like that. And, and he was amazed at the violence of the reaction against this. And he concluded that those cultures that have evolved from the phonetic alphabet are so removed from the stuff of the world as opposed to languages like uh, Chinese or Mayan or something like that where there is a retention of the image in the written language that the cultures descended from the phonetic alphabet are extremely paranoid about questions about the nature of reality. And that's what this is really about. The psychedelic issue does not relate to the drug issue at all. I mean, in fact, it's important to make this point. Drugs and psychedelics are not two members of a family. They are antithetically opposed to each other. The pro-psychedelic position is an anti-drug position. Now, how can this be, since we are accustomed to thinking of psychedelics as drugs? Well, it's like this. What is it that we object to about drugs? And I think everybody can agree, maybe not everybody, but most people can agree, we do have a drug problem. I mean, if you live in the inner cities, uh, you see people getting all twisted up behind this stuff. We have a drug problem. So what is it about drugs that we find problematic? Well, I think that what is objectionable about drugs is that they cause uh, unconscious, obsessive, destructive, self or other behavior. 
unconscious, obsessive behavior is intolerable because we are conscious people accustomed to injecting choice and meaning into our lives. You cannot have meaning if you do not have choice. This is why we don't have to spend any time at all talking about whether uh, the world is predestined. Because if the world is predestined, then I'm not saying what I'm saying because it's what I want to say. I'm saying what I'm saying because I can't say anything else. And you're sitting there because you can't not sit there. So it makes the world very dull and uninteresting. Compulsive, unexamined, obsessive behavior is the quintessence of, of anti-human behavior. It was Bertolanffy, the founder of general systems theory, who said, people are not machines, but in every situation where they're given an opportunity to behave like machines, some of them are drugs which reinforce obsessive, be an unexamined and self-destructive behavior patterns. Well, what do psychedelics do? They destroy behavior patterns, destroy cultural assumptions, completely hold everything up for grabs, completely throw open the possibility that reality could be any of a number of ways that are not culturally sanctioned. So, so in that sense, the psychedelics are almost the answer to the drug problem. And the early, the early use of psychedelics reported spectacular progress with alcoholism. Well, now see, the people who believe that alcoholism is a disease, and I don't follow this literature closely, it seems to me this is a preposterous statement. I mean, a disease? You mean like influenza and smallpox and AIDS? Alcoholism is a disease? Uh, can you get it if you don't practice safe sex? Or do you have to wash your eating utensils? It isn't a disease. What it is, is it's a uh, failure of self-image. And the reason LSD in many cases had a tremendous impact on alcoholic behavior was because it just showed people what they were doing. It said, this is you. You're a drunk. You're a burden to your family, a bore to your friends, you smell bad and you're useless. How do you like it? <coughs> and so somebody said, I don't like it. I said, well then stop drinking. That's, what it, that's how psychedelics cure addiction. And uh, nobody, when they talk about addiction, nobody ever talks about what is called self-restraint. There's a new book that came out about a month or two ago that's incredibly, con I don't remember the name offhand, incredibly controversial. But alcoholism? Yeah, about alcoholism. heavy drinking, myth of alcoholism. Is the, right, yeah, and it, the man takes the position that the last 30 or 40 years where we've seen alcoholism as a, as a disease is just, you know, more bullshit from the medical model. We need a, another alternative. And of course, AA and everybody's just up in arms about the book. Well, yeah, AA has. I a, don't remember now. They, they're. What did you say? The name of the book is uh, by it's by Stina Grant. It's called right. "Heavy Drinking: The Myth of Alcoholism as a Disease." Basically, it discusses the fact that uh, it's eventually it's a rationalization to say that it's a disease. I mean, there are certain people I think that have so, certain chemical reactions to alcohol, but they're in the minority. And that um, this is very important to me as well because this is work that I'm interested in. And um, alcoholism has also touched my family, as it has a lot of the families. And yeah, I, I think the, it's, the it's disease model yeah. has no, there's no responsibility involved, you know. And uh, AA, their position, their goal is not to understand the nature of the universe. They're not in the philosophy business. They're trying to get people to stop drinking. So to maximize that goal, I think that they go far overboard. First of all, all substances, they say, you, if you're an alcoholic, then you must forswear everything. Uh, I don't know how they relate to tobacco. But see, what you've got to understand is we are uh, set up for addiction. It's just like language and cognition and all of these other things, we are the animal which addicts. Other animals don't addict. And addiction is a way of relating to the world. 
we don't not only addict to drugs, we addict to each other, to chunks of territory, to behavior patterns. Exactly, it's attachment. attachment. We attach to everything. Uh, I and it's very real. It's physiological. I remember uh, years and years ago, uh, uh, a woman left me for a homunculus, <laughs> and um, I was uh, appalled. And it, it became it became. Uh, it, I mean, I was like vomiting every four hours, could not sleep, would burst into tears in inappropriate situations, of which there were many in my life. And uh, it, 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 heroin withdrawal cannot be worse than that. I mean, are you kidding? Vomiting every four hours? And, uh, and then one night, in the middle of the night, uh, I, I uh, was just frantic because I, I felt like I, when I was awake, I felt like I wanted to be asleep. When I, was as, when I should have been sleeping, I couldn't sleep. And I was just dragging myself to classes. I felt, you know, this is crazy. I should turn myself in. But they don't have crisis centers for broken hearts. What are you going to do? So, so then, in the middle of one of these bouts, I, I went to the medicine cabinet, and this woman who had left me had left all these, these pills there. And I sorted through all these pills and came upon a small bottle of tranquilizers, <laughs> a, of, a very mild, mild tranquilizer, like Valium or something. Well, I had never taken a Valium. So I said, I'll take half. And uh, I took it and... Uh, the next morning, or a few hours later, I went out to breakfast and somebody came up and sat at my table and said, well, how are you coping uh, since Hermione left you? And I said, who? <laughs> you know, I just jerk, and, and I, it really gave me respect for tranquilizers. I mean, I was appalled. I was appalled that something so real to me, so... So much me, half the tab, I didn't care, you know, let him go. And then I realized all the people around me, this is how they deal with emotional crisis. Nobody wants to feel anything. I mean, the, first, at the moment that an unpleasant emotion rears its head, people go take Valium or, or something else and cut themselves off uh, from feeling. We addict to people. That's the point of that story. And when they leave us suddenly, it's just like having your heroin taken away and you become a mad thing for months, years sometimes. I mean, I still vibrate from this event, and it was 15 years ago.